Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome back to this Git Hooks tutorial. This is part two, Simlinks versus Grunt. So following on from part one, if you have just watched part one, feel free to skip ahead to the next slide. If you haven't, in part one, we discussed how we would enforce policies with Git Hooks. We also discussed how it can be problematic when working within a team. This video aims to resolve the issues we may face using two possible solutions, symlinks or grunt. So firstly, what is grunt? Grunt is a task runner. If you do not know what grunt or task runners are, you should really take some time to look at task runners because it is very important for your career and productivity to understand what task runners are. So if you don't know, task runners automate common tasks. Examples of these tasks are compiling assets, minifying assets, and moving files. These are just some of the common tasks that Grunt or any task runner can run for you. It is important to note that some may say Grunt is in decline, and this is because of the abundance of task runners out there, such as Gulp. The reason why I'm using Grunt as a reference is because I have my skills and knowledge with Grunt. I'm not saying that you have to use Grunt, but I'm saying it's a possibility other task runners should be okay too. So what are symlinks? Symlinks, or symbolic links, are files which link to another file. An easy way to look at a symlink is to think of it as a shortcut. This file does not contain data, instead it points to another file which may contain data. So symlinks versus grunt. Now either approach works to solve our issue. Grunt requires added work to set up. Grunt also requires you to learn how to use it. On the other hand, symlinks are much more straightforward. Now since symlinks are much easier to work with, I'm going to demonstrate how you could set up your Git hooks using symlinks. Okay guys, let's take a look at some code. On the left hand side, I have a directory open called Git Hooks Tutorial. On the top here, I have Sublime Text open to the same directory, Git Hooks Tutorial. And on the right hand side, I have Git Bash and we have CD'd into the exact folder as well, Git Hooks Tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is initialize our Git repository. We do this by doing git init. Okay, so now we have git initialized. On the bottom left, you can see, I'm sorry that's a bit small, but on the left here, we have a hidden folder called .git, and that is what we have just initialized. Now we can see a folder called hooks, and as explained earlier in the series, there are multiple sample hooks here for you to use. What we are going to use is the pre-commit hook, and what is going to happen here is, let's just open this up, just drag it there, and you may not be able to see that, Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things that it does. The one that we need to think about, or the one that I am caring about is, if there are white space errors, print the offending file names and fail. So that is the rule that we want to break. So let me just push this back. Is it gonna listen? There we go. Okay, so, right. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go up a level here. Actually, we can just do it here. We're gonna create a new folder and that is going to be called hooks. Open that up. We're just gonna close that for now. And we're gonna create a new file here. This file is going to be called, actually instead of creating a new file, what we can do is go to our git, go to hooks, and copy that sample file. Go up a level, up a level, go to our hooks folder and paste it in here. Now, you may be confused as why we have two hooks folders. Remember, Git hooks are not in version control, but anything in our uh, directory here will be in version control. So what we wanna do is stick the pre-commit hook within our version control. So let's commit that to Git. So Git status, you can see we have a new folder, a new directory to Git add stage and then git let's just clear this then we can do git status and we can see yes it actually is added to the stage we can do then git commit dash n and our messages add hooks enter 
So clear git status. And great, we have a clean working directory. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to hooks we're going to rename this. We should have done this first. And we're going to change that to pre commit. The reason being is we don't want the sample at the end because it's not going to be a sample anymore. Git status. And let's just add that git status again. So yep, that's all good. We're going to do git commit dash m rename hook git status and we are clean. Okay, so we're going to go back. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to git, we're going to go to hooks, and we're going to create a new file here. And we're going to call that pre dash commit. Now we're not going to append this with anything. So this means the pre commit hook will work. And it will work. But as you know, we just created this file, there's nothing in it. So nothing is going to happen. But git, when you try to commit, will try to run this hook. Okay, so now it's time to create our symbolic link. And I did some research on this and I found it on a Stack Overflow post. You will be able to find the link in the description. But all we need to do is the following. Okay, let me just get the command here. So we're going to do ln s dash f and we're going to go to hooks pre commit. We can change that. Nope, that's fine. Hooks pre commit. And that is actually where our upper directory, upper directory hooks. And that's looking at this file. And then within our git and then hooks, it's going to be taking pre commit and creating the symbolic link to the pre commit in the version control. We're going to hit enter and great. That should be there now. So now that our symbolic link is created, let's test to see if the git hook is actually working. And if you remember, let's go up a level and actually, you know what? We can go here hooks pre commit. So remember now this is actually being linked to. So this file should be working. And if you remember, we have, let me just make this a bit larger. We have this rule here and it's going to be the white space errors. Okay. So let's see if we can break that. So to break it, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and we're going to say PHP and echo hello world and save. And that's going to be index.php. Okay. So we have a PHP file and actually let's first not break it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the terminal. We go git status. Yes, we need to add git add the obviously the index of PHP, then git commit dash n. And then we're going to say add index.php. Okay. Git status. Great. So everything has gone through great. Now, Let's duplicate this line and just say hello Raval. Oops. And at the end of this line, we're going to start to add some white space. And now if we highlight it, you can see there's a few spaces here. Now let's try to commit git status. And it claims because we haven't saved. Okay, git status. Okay, good. Now we're going to do git add. So add the file to the stage, git status. So there it is sitting in the stage. Great. Now let's try to commit git commit dash m. And will this work? Can be our message. Hit enter. And no, we have an error back. Index PHP line three trailing white space. So echo hello world. And it says here are the offending spaces. Great, so our git hook is working exactly as expected. Let's get rid of those white spaces. Save. And now let's try to commit this. Git status, clear, git add, git status, good, git commit dash m, and messages, 
modify index. And voila, we have managed to commit. Just to be 100% sure, our working directory is clean. So that is how you can implement symlinks and git hooks. Now we can have our git hook within our version control. We have easy to manage symlinks from our .git hooks folder. And this is exactly how you need to work when working in a team. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that this has helped you a lot. It is definitely a game changer for everyone and you should be doing this. Thanks for watching.